Here we go, it's Friday night, so let's get those glasses high in the sky because we are talking last call, which means only one thing, it's the final order cutoff. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. This is the last call where we are talking about comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. Make sure you get those orders into your local comic book store or online before Monday evening so they can guarantee copies. We're going to give you our 10 picks for books that are hitting that final order cough as well as those additional printings but either way i am substituting kool-aid tonight for some jameson reserve 12 year old apple juice and jack what are you partaking in because it's friday and it's been one hell of a week oh you know just that good old 40 ounces of fun champagne <laughs> champagne of kool-aids either way guys do us a favor click that thumbs up button for us and with that being said we're going to get into that first pick for Final Order Cutoff, and we are talking about Robin, 80th anniversary. This is that 100-page spectacular. This is going to have a bunch of great writers, a bunch of great artists, and like some of those m big issues that we talk about, they have those decade variants, right? Yeah, and I don't care how much people complain about them. I really love these things. Um, I go into every one of these books saying the same thing, like, I'm just going to pick the cover that I like the most. And then I end up with four or five covers because- I like this cover, but I like this cover. Right, there's just so many. And um, I don't think this is gonna be any different. Yeah, and it's got some of like the best writers that have ever written for Robin are writing stories in this book. And then, like I've said before, for these issues with these uh, variants, these decade variants, a lot of local comic book stores will run like a bundle or a lot deal where you, if you like a lot of those covers, you might get them for a little bit cheaper. So definitely check that out. Either way, Excited for this story. I'm kind of excited to see Robin, you know, not Nightwing, but Robin get his, uh, his due. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm a big Robin fan. Um, I'm in all kind of forms and incarnations. So uh, I, I, would, I would welcome a return to a Robin titled series. Here we are talking about Decorum number one. This is from Image Comics. It's a brand new, well, of course, series. I just said number one. But either way, this also has blockbuster comic book writer Jonathan Hickman attached to it. And it's kind of a book about assassins, right? Right. And this is more of the Jonathan Hickman that I think I've enjoyed is Jonathan Hickman in his uh, kind of creator-owned element. Um, it, I've been on record saying his X-Men stuff is a little confusing to me. But, uh, you know, him in his creator-owned world uh, kind of, sculpting uh, a world is kind of where I got introduced to Jonathan Hickman first. So I'm happy to see him back with a new image series. Now this isn't like a Miller world book, right? It's just a regular creator owned image book. It is, but I do think he has some sort of um, first look deal with somebody. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm noticing Jonathan Hickman a lot of times is tied to that, but yeah, I yeah. agree with you. I like Jonathan Hickman creator owned more than, well, no, no mystery. I'm not a big X-Men fan regardless, but yeah, either way, this book, final word cut off Monday night as well. Yeah, and I don't think it's a book that's going to be heavily printed because we haven't heard a ton of buzz about it. Then getting back over to Marvel, we get a new cable number one. One thing I like about this, though, is it's actually it's written by Jerry Duggan. I like Jerry Duggan's writing, especially when it comes to mutants. But either way, there's going to be a couple different covers for this. Jack, what do you think about Cable? Well, you know, I'm, I've always been a big Cable fan. It's no secret I'm a big Rob Liefeld guy in that whole X-Force era. Um, I've never really enjoyed Cable um, solo series, although I've never gotten into them too much. But there's been like, so much tinkering with the look of Cable, and, and that kind of stuff matters to me. But people seem to be um, highly anticipating this new series. I've seen a lot of posts about it, a lot of posts of um, some of the artwork and imagery, um, a lot of people excited for it. So I think that um, there could be some solid reader buzz kicking off into that first issue. So if there is a variant you like, you might want to lock it down now, talk to your uh, local retailer um, and make sure if they're get, see if they're getting it. 
lock it in. I, too, uh, tend to favor that uh, Noto. There's also a black blank variant that might. Is there really? Yeah. You know how we feel about that. That, that would look cool. Yeah, especially hard to get not high grade with all black. But either way. Then sticking with Marvel, which you're going to find we're going to stick with Marvel a lot this week. But either way, Gwen Stacy number two. We just talked about Gwen Stacy number one released this week. We talked about it on the Bolo show. We talked about, hey, I know our cutoff for number two is probably hitting this weekend. Stay tuned. Well, here we are talking about Gwen Stacy number two. Right. And this is going to be where we see if this series is going to go the way of the series that I mentioned previously, the Black Cat series, where maybe it starts out all about those covers, but the reader buzz builds as the series progresses, mixed with incredible cover A's. And I think that that's a, a recipe that's worked with that series, having those J. Scott Campbell covers. And I want to see if we can get that going with these Adam Hughes covers um, as this series progresses. But, um, you know, issue number one was well-received. I've been on record saying this kind of thing. It seems to me to be kind of like a cover art cash grab. Uh, there's a lot of variants I dig. But, you know, when it comes to Gwen Stacy, I tend to like my Gwen in spider form. This isn't necessarily for me. Having said that, we get a really cool Spider Gwen Ghost Spider variant from our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics. Yes, and let us know in the comments, did you read issue number one? What did you think about it? Are you going to be picking up issue number two? Are you going to pick up issue number two, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, pro I probably will pick it up. Um, but I don't know. I, I, this, this is a series I don't have high hopes for, but I'll probably grab those Hughes covers. I'm a sucker for a set. Marvel Tales Silver Surfer number one. This is going to be interesting. We talk about this trend. Are we going to see that trend, especially with that variant for this, right? We got those covers by In Heck Lee. Variant covers have been going, the one in 50 form have been going crazy. But do you think people are picking it up for the story or just wanting to get that variant? Oh, nobody's reading this for the story, Brad. Let's, let, let's talk about this for what it is. I want this on the list because this is probably your earliest opportunity to try to lock in that price um, that's going to give you a positive ROI on this book. We've seen these consistently hitting uh, the $200 range, 150 to 200. This is a one in 50 variant. Um, we talk about ratio being important. This is a double cover price book. So this is probably a double cover price book. So around a hundred dollars. Now, if you bought that Wolverine for a hundred dollars, you're feeling real good. That's a 200 plus dollar book at this point. Um, several other books have gone that way. Silver Surfer. What's that going to be? The cover is gorgeous to me doesn't necessarily maybe hit the way the Wolverine does. Uh, I think that's because there's so many amazing Silver Surfer covers already out there. But I have no doubt that this is going to continue that trend because of the same things that we've talked about exhaustively on the channel, the, the high cover price, the fact that it takes $200 for a store to get this variant. But if you can find a store early that's willing to let this thing go for somewhere between ratio and double ratio, I think this is a good buy. Um, talking about that one in 50 virgin variant. So now is the time to be checking retail stores and seeing if they're ordering 50 copies of this book or if they're willing to order 50 copies of the book. And here we have Thor number four. We're talking about on the show, but to be honest, I don't think there's a lot of people out there that are following Thor right now Aren't un, are unaware that final art cutoff for number four is this week. That people have found they know about Black Winter. Black Winter is supposed to be coming up in issue number four, right? But final art cutoff for number four is hitting this Monday night. Well, I don't even think it's just people who follow Thor. I think the the comic book um, secondary market community, that speculation investing, flipping, all of those types of categories of buyer are ready for this one. Not only that. Every week when we talk about this list, right, I try to put myself in the mind of a retailer and think like, what is the retailer thinking when they're looking at this list? Um, you know, it's easy for you and I to say, 
Um, yeah, it's a light eat, but for a retailer, they're ordering a representation of most of these books on this list. Um, and there's always one or two books that you feel like are going to get extra attention from retailers. And that's probably where they're going to budget a good chunk of their money. And I think that this week, this is that book because we know in advance of a first appearance to anticipate. Um, now, that is going to drive up print run on this book. Having said that, the fervor for this Donny Kate stuff, it seems to know no bounds, right? We've seen this in the past, but we've also been duped before. So there's some caution that needs to set in. Uh, and I, I don't mean duped in a nefarious way. I think Donnie is just an aggressive salesman who does his job. Um, and I think- If you think that, fool is good, wait till you see number five. Right. And he comes from a reader perspective. That's the thing. He's not, a, people need to understand the perspective that he comes from when he speaks. Um, people tend to think that everybody understands the market the way that maybe you or I do or the way that you who's watching it, um, wherever you're watching or listening on our audio version. Um, either way, that, that's not the case with him. He's a, he's a reader. He's the fold a comic book up in the back pocket type of guy. So, um, you know, he's not concerned with, with the collectability of it. So we've been duped before. You always got to kind of just watch out. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with this book. But I think this is the book that's going to get the most attention, both the regular cover and the variant. I think that people are going to be going for that um, hard on New Comic Book Day. The Stagman, not the Spider-Woman one, right? Correct. <laughs> Correct. And then get back over to the Indie Comics and a little bit of Oni Press. We are talking about Agrasuko number two. Yeah, I mean, and you and I have been on record saying we don't really, we're not the anime guys, we're not the manga guys. So we're, this is not something we're super familiar with. But um, the quick Cliff Notes version, if you're not aware, Agrasuko is a um, anime cartoon on Netflix. It's got two seasons, been extremely well received. Um, it already has a third season ordered and in production. Um, the first issue came out, $15, $20, $25 on release date. It's kind of cooled back down to that $10 to $13 range, which is typical of most new comic book day releases in that second week as everybody's mind moves on and everybody's thinking about that next book. Um, but having said that, uh, the important thing to think about with Agrasuko, we've made that kind of comparison. We made it on Last Call Show, right? And I've seen that comparison made in other places to Rick and Morty. Um, First off, to kind of reach that level of success, it takes multiple seasons, right? You got to build the fan base over time. Um, they're getting started to do their third season. I think they're kind of gearing up where we're starting to see more merchandise. We're starting to get more aware of this entity in general. Secondly, um, and another thing that's kind of important here is if you kind of look at the comparison to Rick and Morty, it's not just issue number one that's extremely valuable. Issues number two, three, four, five of, of Rick and Morty's command value as well. Uh, and I think a lot of the kind of mainstream investors will fade off issue number two and kind of move on to that next thing. And issue number two and three could hold value long-term. So if you're already holding issue number one for that long-term value, it was a long-term play of the week on the Bolo show, you may want to do the same for issue two, three, and four. It is a kind of um, a time, time and time again, a successful play to put those kind of sets together. Uh, and finally, another thing is we've talked about the spec cycle, right? The comic cycle where there's these lulls. This book has come out. It had its time where everybody was talking about it and now everybody's moved on to Punchline and DC Comics. But as I said, season three is coming. It's coming in October. When October comes and the show comes back on, you're going to start to see some of those kind of like lower price copies on eBay start to click off and that price is going to raise as... Agrasuko fans get amped up and excited for the new season. So, um, you know, take this lull as a buying opportunity and kind of be prepared for that fall season when that show is kind of everywhere. And that's what, last year where we saw Agrasuko merchandise all over stores at Christmas time, especially Target. Stay tuned because we got some more Agrasuko we're going to talk about a little bit later.
back over to Image Comics for a minute, we get a new six issue miniseries starting with stealth number one. Yeah, and this comes from famed comic creators and Image Comics partners, Robert Kirkman and uh, I drew a blank for a second. Mark Silvestri. Yeah, this, I got it. Um, yeah, Brian, and this comes from uh, Image Partners and famed Image creators, Robert Kirkman and Mark Silvestri. And it was originally debuted in the early 2000s Top Cow kind of compilation pilot season issue. This is back in the MySpace era. So some of you young kids, this may be way over your head. But they came out with these pilot season issues where you got kind of these um, almost previews of these stories, these short stories. And then people voted on MySpace what they liked. And the idea was that some of these could get into production. The truth is nothing really got off the ground. Um, but we saw this pilot season declassified issue number one, back issue get popular a few years ago when the book Demonic got optioned. And like a lot of option, options, it got optioned and nothing ever really came of it. But there is another book, actually there's four, like four or five other books, but there's another book of note in that same issue that has re-spiked that back issue and that is stealth and stealth tells the story of kind of a detroit-based um black panther iron man hybrid with a little bit of black lightning it's and a falcon yeah this this series is really going to play into that black lightning side if you've watched the black lightning cw tv series so much of it is about the fact that he's older now um, he was this major hero in his 20s and 30s, and people still expect him to be that guy, but in reality, he's in his mid-40s, and things change as you get to that age, and there's some effects you have to deal with, and um, that adds complications. Um, also, you sometimes lose patience with certain things, um, and then that plays into it, and then not connecting with the younger audience, and that plays into it. And I think that this series is going to touch on all of those subjects as we look at like an aging superhero in Detroit. Um, so this is a cool book. Uh, it, it's, it's not a first appearance. That first appearance exists out there. That's a cool back issue to be on the lookout for. But at the same point, this is a series I'm actually interested in, Brian, because we know that Skybound's got that first look deal um, with, with Amazon. And we also know that the, most of the Hollywood market is really looking for superhero stuff. And, you know, you can't do DC and you can't do Marvel. And a lot of independent comics aren't superhero based. So this is one to kind of keep an eye out for. Either way, I think it's going to be a fun story to read. We got another Star Wars book coming with Star Wars Bounty Hunters number one. Yeah, this is like a no-brainer for me. I mean, this is one I'm excited about. And I think this is one that you could kind of show to people maybe who aren't kind of traditional comic fans. Because honestly, you introduce any kid to Star Wars, they're immediately drawn to Boba Fett. I, it, Boba Fett played such a small role in the Star Wars movies yet. So many years later, he's iconic and kind of everyone's favorite, right? He's the, kind of the most popular character. And now here we are um, with the first Disney Plus series in The Mandalorian. And we're getting exposed to kind of all these other bounty hunters in the Star Wars universe. And you know what? People are kind of carrying over that popularity. Uh, I was a little concerned, like, oh, man, why don't you just do kind of a Boba Fett uh, prequel series? That, that'd just be easy. And, you know, but the... Disney and, and Star Wars, they did a great job. And I think people want to know more. You saw that with every episode of The Mandalorian. When they would talk about like his customs, people would be constantly all over social media asking questions and, and talking about backstory. And I think there's so much room, because Marvel doesn't want to really acknowledge that Dark Horse stuff, there's so much room for Marvel to kind of color in and, and fill in uh, with all of this backstory and history. And I think that people really want to read stories about these bounty hunters. So Baby Yoda or not, this Le Le Bermejo cover is amazing. Um, I think that this book is going to be a, a cool read. Um, I hope that it, it kind of is that. I, what I think the bounty hunters, I think of them like kind of like the way Punisher is to the Marvel Universe. They are to the Star Wars Universe. 
Yeah, I think especially with Mandalorians brought a lot of attention to the bounty hunters. And you're talking about how Boba Fett was cool. I think a lot of kids nowadays, it's kind of like the same way people become cowboy fans, right? Back in the day, I was like, why are you a cowboy fan? And I was like, oh, it's just what my dad's watched. or that's what. Yeah. So now you're getting Boba Fett fans. It's like, that's what my dad liked. Um, but for Dallas fans, there's still time. You can change over to the Redskins. Hail to the Redskins. No, you know, we're welcome to have you, but either way. <laughs> but yeah, Bermejo, I'm a big fan of Bermejo, but I also like that Carrie Andrews cover. And either way, but Darth Vader, Kylo Ren, and I'm excited to pick up Bounty Hunters. Yeah, this is one I'll be reading and chasing variants for. And then here we have from Marvel again, Submariner Marvel snapshot number one. This is going to be what a series that highlights golden characters through today's characters, right? Yeah. And they're really making an effort to kind of shine a light on a lot of these characters, even like the Marvel podcasts, they've kind of told these stories and we've seen the, the kind of reprint of the Marvel's books, uh, the annotated version. So I think they're really trying to make an effort to highlight some of these kind of golden age heroes uh, of the marvel universe yeah and can't go wrong with alex ross doing the cover no absolutely not i mean one of the most consistent cover artists for the last like 20 years yeah the good thing about this a lot of these marvels are the um alex ross that they've been doing they've been a little bit higher in price this one is an msrp of about 4.99 so yeah yeah it's better it's better than like that marvel's annotated which had like that what 5.99 6.99 msrp so there it is, guys. Those are our 10 picks for Final Art Cutoff. But if you want to see that full list, we're talking about comic books, games, trade paperbacks, the entire Final Art Cutoff list, head on over to simplemanscomics.com. We have that up for you right now. But like we always do, we have some additional printings to talk about as well, right, Jack? That's right. You know, I love late printings, and we've got some good ones this week. First off, from Boom Studios, we've got Red Mother, my favorite new Boom Studios series. Number one coming in with a fourth print, and number two coming with a second print. Then we've got Teenage Dream Ninja Turtles, number one, the second print. Come on, guys, what's up with the whack reused cover? Avengers, number 30, the second print, seeing a lot of buzz with that baby cover. Captain Marvel, number 14, the second print. Immortal Hulk with great power, number one, the second print. Uh, X-Men Fantastic Four, number one, the second print. A book I've got my eye on, Agrisuko, number one, the second print. Uh, I could see that one being buzz, uh, buzz on the back issue market. Uh, Star Wars, Darth Vader, number one, the second print. And then finally, the main event and something that I think we need to talk about. And one of the reasons why we have this show in general, we want to highlight books that might sneak under the radar for FOC. Those books that people don't want us talking about, right, Brian? Yeah, like, I'll say, like, we talk about these additional printings a lot of times, and there's always one publisher you don't see a lot of additional printings for lately, and that's usually DC, right? And that's right, and we've been real critical. I'll say I've been real critical over the past year um, of DC mailing in these late printings. Now, we don't have cover art for these two books, so you have to order these blind, which is what I think will contribute to the print run on these or maybe the lack of a print run and that is batman number 89 and year of the villain hell arisen number three now if those issues sound familiar to you of course that is the first cameo appearance and first full appearance of punchline joker's new henchwoman seems like a possible harley quinn foil uh could be his, his love interest definitely seems like an important villain um and uh certainly a character that could be here for a long time we are coming up on the release of Batman 89. And that book is already booming on the secondary market. The information about Punchline and her debut in Batman 89 came after FOC. So we didn't even cover Batman 89 on the last call show. And not to mention a lot of times the second printings hit FOC a week after the release of the books. And here you're getting it opposite. Yeah, so that's really what I want to talk about is it seems like DC Comics is making a knee-jerk reaction to what the market's doing, right? They've got suddenly these books are selling out at retail. So DC wants to rush that second printing out. They could be doing something really good or really bad, depending on how they're playing this. If they're putting this book out for 
the purpose of like kind of the way Boom Studios does, where they put out the solicitation before number one comes. Number two, that makes the second printing still hot because it's under ordered. And then they release a third printing soon after that all the readers can pick up. But if they're real, this is the second printing, say, you know, just as is, and, and there's no necessarily plan for that next printing. Um, this may get under ordered because everybody's still focused on that first printing, which hasn't come out yet. It's still a week away from coming out. Um, I don't know as retailers are looking at this sheet, if they're going to put in heavy orders when they haven't sold out of the first print yet, uh, they, I know they're going to anticipate that they're going to, but DC comics late printings have a bad track record. Um, even dating back to a couple of years ago with Batman who laughs that second printing, they didn't change the cover art on that. Um, they just did a color change. If, if they do something different with this, this could be big. Imagine if they did the punchline cover for the second print, it gets shown after FOC um, and dealers don't put in heavy orders. That could be a huge book. Um, it, so this is one that you got to take a flyer on. And I think that people aren't talking about, I have it. I, and yeah, I that's low cost. That's low buy-in to take a flyer on. Absolutely. That, and that's why, honestly, I will, I, I'm not going to put it in some huge order because again, you don't want to get caught holding the bag, but I am absolutely going to pre-order this book in full transparency, both books. Um, cause I, you know, I like sets, so I will probably, that's the way I would sell them is in a two book set, but you know, you have an opportunity here, um, by watching this show. And this is what we wanted to do is to highlight these books, these late printings, they get kind of at the bottom of this FOC list. And I, like I said, I try to think about this as if I'm a retailer and you're looking at Thor four and all of these big books, these later printings tend to be fill-ins. They look at the shelf and what do they need for readers? And, um, this year, the difference between this and like a boom who does these advanced orders is with boom, you've got the CEO, Ross Ritchie putting out stuff on Instagram. There's hype building. Again, I haven't seen anyone talk about this second print coming from DC comics yet. I, so this I think is going to be under the radar. So I think DC comics has a major winner on their hand. Um, it's all about how they play it from here. Uh, but I want everybody in Simple Men's Comics family to at least know about this and realize that FOC is coming up on Monday. So if you want to get those orders in, make sure you do that by Monday, um, what, like 10.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, by that cutoff, they call your LCS and let them know because they may not even be aware. Yeah, and I think, it's, I think it might be 10 p.m. But a lot of times, that's like the final cutoff. So a lot of these comic book stores or online places, they might have an earlier time. So just make sure you get them in. I'd say by Monday this morning. Weekend. Monday. Yeah, this weekend. Make sure that is yeah. on your agenda this weekend. If this, this is something that piques your interest or at all, you know, seems like uh, you want to make sure you secure at least a copy for the PC. So there it is, guys. Ten picks plus additional prings. Again, that whole list is up there on simplemanscomics.com. Make sure you guys head over there to check it out. And if there's books that we didn't talk about that you're aware of that are hitting Final Order Cutoff and you're interested in, let us know in the comments. And with that being said, this is Jack and Brian from Simple Man's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.